You need truth and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon, and I have a treat for you today. I want to say happy Father's Day. I hope you guys took your fathers out, celebrated them today. Anybody who is a spiritual father, physical father, who mentors, who teaches, celebrate those who are father-like figures in your life today. So I'm going to tell you, man, the one thing that you get from fathers is that you get the seed. When you have the seed, you have the tree. And the one thing that I love about fathers is that you have life lessons with them. So I want to say happy Father's Day again. And I have a treat for you guys today. We are interviewing today with Dr. Elijah Nicholas. I just got off the phone with him. So listeners, you're going to be in for a treat. And I just want to say that black trans lives matter. We have to remember our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ plus community. Because they are a part of God's kingdom and they are a part of us as well. So I want you guys to be blessed. And you may say, man, Brother Leon, this is totally different. Yes, it is different because God has called us to celebrate difference, to celebrate life because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So I want you guys to sit back and listen to this interview today. So I bring you listeners, Dr. Elijah Nicholas. Hello. Hey, Dr. Elijah Nicholas, how you doing? <laughs> I am doing wonderful, sir. How you doing tonight? I'm doing blessed. I told my listeners that we are going to hear from you and everything. So I've already did the introduction. Tell us who you are, Dr. Elijah Nicholas. Tell us where you come from, your history. I know you can't be on here as long as we would like, but give us what we can give us something and we will definitely come back because you have a story and a testimony awesome awesome absolutely thank you so much brother leon for having me on i am first of all happy father's day to you happy father's day to all the fathers in the world and uh to the mothers who play fathers or play the role of fathers happy father's day to spiritual fathers and everybody yes um thank you so much for having me on today i am as you said dr elijah nicholas I hail from the great state of Wisconsin. Wow. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I actually now, now I live in, uh, in the great state of Georgia. Okay. So I went, went south in 1999. Uh, I left in 1999, just a year or so after graduate school. And one of the primary reasons that I left Wisconsin is because of the segregation that existed in the Midwest and specifically in the city that I'm from, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow. And so I, I, I went south looking for opportunity, and I tell you, opportunity met me in the south, and it has been an amazing experience. I've uh, traveled the world with the military, and uh, Georgia has been my second home. Um, and so I've been here now for a little bit over 20 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm happy to share whatever you whatever you want to know about the great doctor. Okay. <laughs> Doc, tell us about your military career. What branch? So I have I have a funny story about that, Brother Leon. Okay. I started in the army. Okay. Right? And and I, I joke with my brother about this all the time because he's still in the army. Wow. Uh, he's uh, he's an amazing he's actually a full bird colonel now. Wow. So he's been in the military for a long time. Okay. And uh, I always joke with my brother, I got smart and I transferred over to the Air Force. <laughs> and I ended up <laughs> retiring from the Air Force. But the funny part of the story is when I took the ASVAB, the military test to yes. get in the military, I took that test to get out of class from the uh, Wow. I didn't take that test. <laughs> I didn't take that test to join the military. I took the test because I it was my sophomore year and I heard, oh, if I go take this test, I can get out of class for an hour or two, right? Yeah. And so I took that test and I did a horrible. Oh my God. Quickly, 
That is amazing. Yeah. That is definitely amazing. So, so, what was life after the military? What was life like? Like in the military or after the military? After the military. So, life after the military was was very interesting, and I say that because uh, when I served in the military, to just give you a little bit of my history, I served in the military as a woman. I know that might surprise your listeners a little bit, yeah. but I am transgender. I was born female and I transitioned to male a couple of years ago. Okay. So my life after the military was a lot different than my life in the military. Okay. When my mother signed the papers for me to go when I was 17 years old, I had to sign the papers, you know, you go down to the Met station and you sign your life away and you sign a, a thousand pieces of paper and it say your physical exam and your temperature and you got just push ups and all that stuff. Yeah. And I always remember I went in the military, Brother Leon, on a lie. Wow. Two lies actually. Two lies. The first lie was on so this tells you how long ago I went in. On the application. There was actually a question on there at the time that said, are you a homosexual? And of course, I said no, because if I would have said yes, I wouldn't have been able to serve in the military. So that was the first lie. Wow. The second lie was um, I had a very uh, uh, strained, if you will, relationship with my father at the time. Okay. And so I listed him as deceased. Wow. That's how angry and hurt I was. Okay. So I went in the military on the credits of a lie. Wow. And I spent I spent twenty four years, almost twenty five years in the military telling a lie. I lived life in secrecy. I lived life um as a lesbian, as a closeted lesbian, because that was before uh the don't ask, don't tell repeal. Uh, was missing it, uh, or the don't ask, don't tell policy was missing yeah. so I lived my life in the closet as a lesbian. But Leon, I can't tell you how many boyfriends I had, and I kept forgetting their names. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Every time I went home, I made up a name, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, and I would start forgetting names, and then when I had a different girlfriend, I would, you know, I would forget that this was someone that I said was my sister, and so, you know, there was a bunch of lies, and with lies come internal calamity, right? Yes. Internal pain. Yes. And so I lived with a lot of internal pain. I did a lot of drinking. I experienced depression. And at the same time, I progressed very fast. I excelled in the military. I was very good at what I did, but there was just one piece of me that I wasn't able to live truthfully. But yeah. fast forward to 2010, just before I got ready to retire, I was asked to do an article. 
Okay. Uh, for someone that was overseas that was doing the LGBTQ plus. Oh, no, at that time, just LGB, LGBT okay. uh, article, right? Yes. And they wanted me to talk about being gay, living as a lesbian, and being in the military. And my first response was, H-E double hockey stick? No. <laughs> I am not. I am not telling my story because... Uh, I could lose my entire career. I could lose my retirement. I could, like, the 20-something years that I had served would just go away. Wow. But that was on a, a Saturday. Sunday, I went to church. And it was a new location for the church that I was attending at the time. It was my first time I was late, so I was sat in the, you know, the fellowship hall downstairs. It was the overflow room. Yeah, the yeah. And I was sitting there, and I always remember my bishop at the time was preaching about treasure in the trash. Yeah. And how, how one man, you know, you know the story, one man's treasure is another man's trash. Yes. And I remember bishop specifically saying, it was as if I was in the congregation sitting in front of him, and I was the only one there. I remember him saying, write the book. Somebody needs to hear your story. Do the interview. It was like he was talking directly to me. Yeah. And my life literally changed. That was 10 years ago. Wow. Almost 10 years exactly in October. Wow. And I tell you, that is when my journey of truth really started. Wow. So when I retired, I started on my memoir, uh, didn't ask, didn't tell, the life of a gay Christian soldier. I started on that in 2010 before I retired. And I didn't publish until 2016 because, it's, you know, writing a memoir takes a long time. And also, I wrestled with the truth and whether I was going to tell my truth because I was still somewhat in the closet. So life just before retiring and then after retiring was very uh, tumultuous for me. I, I did a lot of uh, counseling and therapy and wrestled with God a lot. And it was really the beginning of my my journey to my truth and yeah. my journey to begin to, to tell my story. And it was the beginning, actually, of when I got in ministry. Okay. <laughs> That's where I got out of the military. Let me ask you something. I, I mean, I know you see, I'm, I know you have read the scriptures. So, so let me ask you this. Were, were, was there a struggle, you know, when it came to, 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 to what the scripture says? Because, I mean, you got born again. Did anybody try to, you know, what they call pray the gay away or try to cast the devil out of you and all that type of stuff to try to, you know, make you heterosexual again? Did anybody try that? Absolutely. I tried it. You tried it. Wow. I tried it. Okay. Listen, I can tell you the day it was July, I believe July 2nd. I went to church here in Atlanta. It's a very, very prominent church. My mom was in town for the 4th of July weekend. This was before, well before I retired. Okay. And I was experiencing so, so much turmoil, internal turmoil, Brother Leon. Yeah. I said, God, please. I will always remember this pastor preached about the ABCs of Christianity. Yeah. And I said, God, please take this away from me. Like, like Paul, take this thorn out of my side. Yeah. Like, if, if this is, if this is not of you, please take it away. Yeah. Because I don't want it. Yeah. It's too painful. Mm hmm. And I left church. And it never went away. <laughs> okay. It never went away. Okay. And so I, I I say that to say even I tried it myself as the good Christian that I proclaim profess to be. Yeah. I tried to pray the day away myself. Yeah. And yes, people around me, people in my family, uh, you know, society says so many things. Yeah. And then of course to answer your, your question, there was a scripture that I used to get hung up on, and it's the scripture in Leviticus, I believe it's twenty two and eighteen or something like that. The scripture that specifically says that man should not lie with man and woman should not lie with woman or mankind. You know, you know I think yeah. the scripture. Oh yeah, yeah, that, right? yeah. And so that is the scripture. 
And I, now, now, I could tell you that scripture at that time, but I couldn't tell you anything else. I okay. knew that scripture because it had been thrown at me so many times. Mm -hmm. Not in a not in a loving, educating way, but in a hateful, fearful way. I believe okay. there's two two primary emotions, love or fear. And we operate out of one or the other, not both simultaneously, but one or the other. And at that time, that's the scripture that was being thrown at me. And to be quite honest, it caused a lot of of friction, uh, internal friction, and then external friction with myself in the traditional church. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I, I honestly, I ran from church. I was like, I don't want no parts of this. Like, I love God, and like for a long time, I was like, man, does God hate me? Does God hate me? Yeah. And when I moved to Atlanta in '99, I traveled with the military for years. In 2007, I found. Um, uh, ministry, or I would say God ordered my steps to this ministry. And the word was about love. Love and inclusion and acceptance. Okay. Love and inclusion and acceptance. And for a long time, even in that environment, I struggled with scripture versus my reality. Yeah. Right? And it wasn't until I finally surrendered to the love the will of God. Period. Yeah. I don't believe, this is my personal opinion, that I don't believe that God made a mistake with me. Even yeah. in my gender transition. Yeah. I don't believe that. Because yeah. I don't believe that God makes any mistakes. Yeah. I believe that I, as well as you and everyone in this world, is made in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. And therefore there, there is no wrong. There is nothing wrong. Absolutely, we can interpret scriptures in different ways, but there is nothing wrong with the way any of us are born. Yeah. Here, the yes. way any of us are born. Yes. Now the decisions that we make, once we are able to start making decisions, that's a different story. Yeah. But again, many of those decisions are made out of fear, and oftentimes, speaking for myself. Isn't it? Yeah. Because we go based on what we've been taught. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes, sometimes what we've been taught is out of ignorance. Yeah. Let me ask it's you something. Real Let me ask you something. Yes, sir. Do you feel as though that the church, because I feel as though that God, He made, He made us sexual beings, but the one issue that I have with the church is that they have allowed, they have allowed the devil to control the narrative. Of what sex is and what it looks like because the only thing the church really talks about sex wise is fornication adultery celibacy and homosexuality and that's it but no but but it's more to us than that And the bible also says that whosoever cometh unto me i will in no wise cast out there's no stipulations on that so so my question is you you said it earlier about you know, people they were aggressive, and you left the church because there was no love. So, do you can I can I honestly say that the church suffers from homophobia? Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay. Let, let me let me let me let me go back to the first part of your your response when you asked the question. Yeah. I, I I know we may we may differ in our theology on this perspective. Yeah. Okay. But I don't be, I don't be, I don't believe. In the devil. Okay. I I I, I have um, uh, dismissed the devil and evil from my faith. Okay. I don't believe the devil exists. Okay. I understand. That's probably a lot for many listeners to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Um. And the reason that I don't believe in the devil. Okay. Is because, as I said, everything. Is orchestrated, ordained by God. Okay. I don't believe there's any evil in God. Okay. Yeah. I believe the decision that we as humans make, the choices that we make, the things that we do in our emotions are fall, yeah. can cause it to seem like there's a devil. Mm -hmm. But I but I would go so far as to say 
Many times when we say the devil made me do it, yeah. I would say maybe a bad decision made you do that. Okay. And I, I think that, that that's one of the one of the things that the traditional church and I, I use traditional very loosely. Okay. The traditional church I think uses the devil to bash homosexuality. Okay. Person, yeah. Person. Or, or, or fornication or, or any of the things that you mentioned mm -hmm. versus using love and getting to the root of why there's homosexuality, why there's fornication, why there's multiple sexual, multiple sex partners, why did all these things exist? Okay. So there, it, it's, a, it's a, in my opinion, it's a, it's a huge dichotomy between love and, 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 and hate, love and fear. Okay. Can we say and it's a I level believe. of consciousness? Yes. Okay. Can we say it's a level of consciousness? Absolutely, we can say that. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. And I think that. Okay. Because let I me just say this. I let me just say this. So, sorry to cut you off. Some people are going to say, no, hey, no, you're no. starting to sound like Carlton Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I may sound like Dr. Pearson. I love Mr. Mm -hmm. Pearson. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson has, uh, uh, in, in transparency, Bishop Carlton Pearson is the bishop over, uh, or, 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 we don't have the traditional overseers like many other uh, churches. But a spirit and truth sanctuary where I attend, Bishop Pearson is, is kind of the leader, if you will, for D.B. Park, who is my uh, spiritual leader and my pastor. Okay. And so, some of, some, some of the things that you hear me say may be, and I'm sure are in line yeah. with what Bishop Pearson says and teaches. Yes. And it is absolutely going back to what you, it's a matter of consciousness. And if, if we want to tie the consciousness or the word consciousness with the scripture, we can use the word veil. Yeah. It's a matter of when the veil is lifted. Yes. Yes. To me, yes. there's no difference. Yeah, exactly. When the veil is lifted, your eyes are open to a new world. Your eyes are open to a new level, to a new dimension. It's the same thing as using the word conscious. Yes, yes, exactly. Because the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Absolutely. And so, your mind, <laughs> well, you know, your mind is your conscious. Yeah. On another level. Exactly, exactly. I, I totally agree, Doc, because I'm going to tell you, I'm working on my conscience being being elevated and raised and changed because I, I totally agree with Bishop Pearson's message about inclusion. A lot of people think that wow. that, yo, man, you, you backslide. I'm like, dude, they done took that message and turned it into the grace message, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. right. So 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 and, and, and the reality is what is backslide? Yeah. When when we when we to me that remember the two primary emotions love or fear mm -hmm. backsliding backsliding is on the fear side yeah exactly exactly there's, there's, there's so many millennials who don't come to church mm -hmm. because the first thing they hear is the word have you been backsliding yeah and so they stop at the door yeah 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 <laughs> yeah you know because I, I look at right? it yeah right you're definitely right because I look at it like. You know, so I don't think the way that you think. So you think that I backslid or you think that I'm in a dark place. You know what I mean? And a lot of times I'm like, nah, man, it's, it's, it's not a dark place. It might it might be dark to you, but it's not dark to me. It's, it, it seems right. that when you get That's into true. a level of consciousness, things begin to make sense. The puzzle pieces start to come together and you live your truth. And that's what is so important, living your truth. You know, because the Bible says Absolutely. that you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I'm free to live. I'm free to be who I'm supposed to be. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And that's, that's where I'm at. I see exactly what you're saying because I'm yeah. free now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm free. Like really free. Okay. <laughs> so so let me ask you this. When, what was the straw that broke the camel's back when you made up in your mind? Like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to live my life and be who God has called and be and be the person God has called me to be. What was the straw that broke the camel's back? You know what, Brother Leon? It was literally a matter of life or death. Okay. Literally. 
Um, when I I had a fast forward, I got I, I was called to ministry. I uh, matriculated through ministry and um, began uh, churches, and we had uh, ministries in the United States and in Africa, all over the U.S. Leaders all over the U.S. And I was affirmed uh, as an apostle in 2017. Oh, hold on, hold on. You was I what? Was hold on. Go. I'm sorry. The moment. I'm sorry. Can you run back and say what you were? You was an apostle? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a matter of, I don't know, I started my in the ministry in 2012 or 13 uh -huh. is when I, when I, um, the first answered the call. Okay. You know, okay. Right? I started out working security. Security for um, um, the church, right? Yeah. And then I ended up going into to the ministry and training and so on. And I believe personally, uh, Brother Leon, that one of the reasons, there's two reasons why I matriculated so fast. One is because I had an ego the size of the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Wow. My ego, my ego was so big. So I look at matriculation in, in the same way as you know, getting my degrees or getting my graduate degrees. Like, I've always wanted to be the best. I've always operated and moved in excellence, right? Mm -hmm. And so my ego allowed or helped me move fast, right? Yeah. I thought it was all about me. But I believe now in hindsight that God allowed me to be a minister, allowed me to be an elder, allowed me to be a pastor, allowed me to be affirmed as an apostle. In the time that God did, so that I could see and experience the church in the traditional sense, right? Yeah. I knew in the moment that I was affirmed that that was the end. God showed me literally when the apostle put her hands on me that that was the end. I didn't know what was next, but I knew that was the end. In transparency, I was also going through uh, t uh, challenging times in my marriage. So within six months of being uh, <laughs> becoming an apostle, within six months, Brother Leon, wow. the ministry got to shut it down. My marriage got to shut it down. Wow. And my old my old life got to shut it down. And I I wrestled with God for so long. And I literally, I, I, I moved with my dogs with about $200 in my bank account. My dog crates and my suitcases. I moved back to, to the place, my, my place that I'm in now. And I was in such a painful, broken place, Brother Leon. And I'll never forget, God led me to the ministry that I'm in today, Spirit of Truth Sanctuary. And my pastor so graciously welcomed me. He hugged me. He loved on me. He didn't even know everything that was going on, right? I don't yeah. even knew any of it. He probably knew in the spirit. Yeah. And probably within a month or two, we sat down and we had lunch. I was so broken, Brother Leon. Oh, I was so broken. I can't even tell you how broken I was. It was like, it was painful just to be there. That's how broken I was. Wow. And... When I tell you my pastor loved me back to life, yeah, he loved me back to life. He saw, this was before my gender transition, mm -hmm. he saw Elijah before Elijah saw life. Wow. He, he conversed with me as Elijah, mm -hmm. as my future self. He didn't wow. converse with me from the broken Space. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Of course he had empathy yeah. and he understood, but he spoke life into me. And that mm -hmm. moment changed my life. Pastor D.E. Paul, he is a friend, a brother, a pastor. And let me tell you, um, I got to the point of no return. It was literally life or death. And I said, I can't do this anymore. I have got to live my truth. I wrote a whole memoir and didn't tell 100% of the truth. And that truth is that I'm transgender. I was a boy born in a female body. And okay. I, the, the moment that I said yes, my life literally started changing. I mean, literally. Yes. Everything around me. 
Yes. Friends started changing. My my separation, my divorce went through, and just things started changing. Now, the the last two and a half years, I tell you, it it was a it was a time of of wrestling with God. Uh, it was a time of pain, and then a time of celebration, and 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 then a time of renewing. Yes. That's the that's the the circulation of, of how our consciousness changed. I know that now. Okay. Right. Um. Uh, but that to answer your question, I just got to the point of no return because it was life or death. I chose life. I That's chose great. God. That's great. And I chose me. That's great. That 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 um, Doc, I am so happy for you. So let let me ask you this: Now that 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 part of your life is over, how are you helping people now? Because I mean, you you came out of a place. You came you came out of a place that was dark. And now you are you you're in a place your conscience has elevated, and now you are in a place of light. You're in a place of new life, and you are living your truth. What is it that you do now to help people who are coming out, who are who are transitioning the way that you did? How how can they come to the other side? So what 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 unique I think about telling the truth mm -hmm. is that sometimes, oftentimes. Simply living your truth sets people free. That's good. That's great. Living your truth sets people free. Yes. And so the first thing that I do is simply live, walk, breathe in my truth. My core values are authenticity, transparency, and integrity. Every single day I ask God to allow me to walk in those things. And if I'm not walking in it, please interrupt me and get me back in alignment. So that's the first thing, walking in my truth. The second thing that I do is I am a writer. Okay. And I've written um, several books. Uh, I think my first publication was in 2010 and then I published my memoir in 2015. And so if you look back at my old book, you'll see that uh, at the time I was writing about, um, uh, I think my first book was called uh, Oh, God, it's called Get, I had a Get in the Flow theory. And it was the seven principles of becoming a wealthy Christian, right? Yeah. So I talked, break down the scriptures and I talked about that. And so as I have uh, evolved consciously, I now write about my truth. I write about my life and That's my story. Great. That's great. And so the, 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 the most recent writing that I've done, I've just published a book, it's called Medulla. And this book is a love tool. <laughs> it is a resource for families to have discussions about unconditional love, gender expression, and compassion. That's great. It's about a little girl. Yeah, it's about a little girl who she's navigating how to, her name is Madison, and she's navigating how to, um, how to, how to embrace her now uncle who used to be her auntie. And so uh, when I tell you God has really just dropped this gem and said this is this is what we need to be now to come back to love. It doesn't matter what you do in your bedroom. It doesn't matter what you do at your job. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It's about returning to love, returning to compassion, and just returning to our truth. We can't walk in love and compassion personally, collectively, if we don't walk in it individually in our truth. You're right. You're right. So, Doc, can you give us, tell us the title of that again, and, and, and where will people be able to pick this up? Absolutely. So, it's something exclusively on Amazon. The ebook is out right now, and it's called Madudo. And it's M A. D O O D L E, Madoodle, just like you write, like Doodle. And when you read the book, you'll understand that Madoodle is the connection between Madison, the little 10 year old girl, and her uncle Pete. That's their special connection, that's their bond. And when you get to, to that part of the book, you'll, you'll say, ah, okay, I get it. And that's, that's where the name came from. But it's available on Amazon, the ebook is out, and the print copy should be available even tomorrow. Or Tuesday. Okay, that is great, Doc. Also, how can people get a hold of you? Because I understand you're a life coach as well. 
Yes, I am a life coach, and I like to say, Brother Leon, that I'm a light coach. L I G H T. Okay, that's great. And that's the that's the yes, light coach, and that's the last thing that I say of the three things that I do. I like to help individuals remember their light, because I believe that there's a light in all of us, and as we go through. Uh, the phases, the normal course of life, sometimes our light is dim. That's what happened to me, Elijah. My light was dim when I was a little kid. And so Elijah went into hiding. I was a little tomboy, right? And I, my, so my light was dim. I walked around. My light was bright, but it was nowhere near as bright as it, as it is now. And so I use my life as an example. I use my testimony and I use my stories and my pain to hopefully help prevent somebody from going 48 years of their life or 48 days or 48 minutes for that matter living in the pain that I live in because you don't have to. Okay. You don't have to. Doc, so how, how can the people get a hold of you who may want your help? Do you have like a website or a number that they can call? I am on Instagram, Dr. Elijah Nicholas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, I'm Dr. Eli Nicholas. The best way to reach me actually is on Instagram. Send me a DM uh, and I respond within 24 hours. Okay. So that's the best way to reach me is uh, IG, Facebook, or uh, Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn under uh, Dr. Eliza Nicholas on all social media handles. Okay, Doc, I want to thank you for your time. The one thing that I see, I'm telling you, if you haven't started, start writing the screenplay because I believe your book is going to turn into a movie. That's the God knows truth. You know what? That's confirmation. I received that. Um, I received that. I'll, I'll leave that at that. Thank yeah, you, Brother Leon. Definitely. <laughs> well, listeners, this is this is Brother Leon, and we have interviewed with Dr. Elijah Nicholas. He is living your truth. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to live a lie. Live your truth. Because that is what God wants from us, to live our truth and to be free. So, Doc, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time, sir. You be blessed. Listeners, go out and get that book. Because I'm going to tell you, yes. Doc is about to blow up. I'm telling you. Watch. <laughs> Watch. Thank you, Jimmy, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, you so much for having me. I appreciate it, sir. All right, Doc. We got we to gotta do this again. Seriously. Seriously. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Because we got we got we got so many. Yeah. So many dynamics that, that we got to talk about. So I'm happy to have anytime you have me, I'm happy to be here, sir. All right, sir. I will definitely whatever your time frame is, we will make the time. All right? All right, let's do it. Thank All, you, sir. All right, thank you. Be blessed. All right. All right. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.